we got some little custom name tags. Come here. You guys. You don't like being picked up. You're very wiggly. Oh, you're going to punch me in the face. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're not going to do it? We tried to gnaw them off for about two days. Peggy's is the original SSR. Uh, and it says Ancient Peggy Carter. And Dottie has a little Black Widow logo. What, why, says Ancient Dottie Underwood. Why didn't you give her, like, the Leviathan logo? Well, because Dottie was, like, a Mark I Black Widow. But she was Leviathan, though. Yeah, but she came out of the Red Room. But she was Leviathan, though. But that's not who trained her. But that's she was Leviathan. But she was Leviathan, though. But she was Leviathan, though. Don't be that guy. I am that guy. Don't be that guy. She was Leviathan, though. Well, you're never getting to pet my cats now. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> no, yeah, Grady. When Sarah, Grady is already leery of humans in general. When the doorbell rings, when someone knocks, even if they never set foot inside the house. He runs and hides. Which is funny, because I ordered Panera delivery the other day, and as soon as the doorbell rang, Peggy and Dottie went running for the door like, oh my god, I'm a new person. Maybe they'll pet us. Grady's and like, we're like oh. hovering around the door like, hey, hi, hi. Grady, Grady, hide. Grady, hide. Yeah. So now that she's here, he has been Peggy, just... Peggy and Dottie are whores. Especially... <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you just call your cats whores? Dottie's a little more standoffish, but Peggy, like, oh my god. Did you still pet her? Oh yeah, Peggy's a whore. <laughs> <laughs> gonna have a bath hanging off the thing? Okay, that's the sense of <laughs> Did you just... Your cats are whores. Okay. Good info. Good to know. Um, so Grady's already very Heidi. Now he has decided he was hiding under the bed. His best, he, he thought this was his, he's got this mindset of, if he can't see you, you can't see him. All cats think that. So yeah. he cats got- Cats think that if they hide under the one inch overhang from a step, that they are <laughs> hidden as fuck. So Grady hid behind a curtain in my bedroom with his tail oh. hanging out and is like, They'll never fucking find me here. Yeah. Yeah. And when I was upstairs earlier preparing for the show and Sarah was downstairs watching Rick and Morty and I'm up here just typing away and Grady's like, she's gone. Everything's fine. Everything's great. He comes in here and he's purring. He's wrapping around my legs. He's he's rolling over. And then Sarah comes upstairs. And she's like, Jesus fucking Christ. It's not over. Well, isn't that, isn't that oh, when you actually, you actually called for me to come up so I could see him being normal? Yeah. <laughs> I call for him to come. Look, look, he's fine. He's fine now. And he heard her on the stairs. He's like, Jesus Christ. Bridget was like that. Bridget does not like people that don't live in her house. At all. You guys remember Bridget. Bridget yeah. does not like people that don't live in her house. And yes, Peggy and Dottie are spade. They're not that kind of whore. I'm talking attention <laughs> whore. Mm. Like, they don't go outside and they're spade. So, no, I did not slut shame my cats, okay? Like, they're attention whores. I wish I, I, I'm I'm terrified of the, if Grady ever getting out of this house. He would be dead in like two minutes. I just worry because they're fucking fast, man. <laughs> but they're chipped, so. Well, yours would be like death. Yours would kill everything. I know they are little beasts. Grady would be like, ah. He would either have a heart attack, or he would run right into the street, not understanding. He, he would run right into traffic, be like, I'll hide under those fast moving objects and no one will see me. Oh. He's an, it, he's just most an of the time, if indoor cats get outside, they hunker down under something nearby and you find them like 50 feet from the house three days later. <laughs> they don't go far usually. I just, he, well, thanks. Hey, jump up already. There we go. Thankfully. Grady is terrified of the front door. So I don't think he's ever get, I, when I was cleaning, this past weekend, I opened the shutters in, on the glass, on the patio in my in my uh, kitchen to the glass. Mm -hmm. I'm listening. I'm just giving them something more interesting to look at but than me. 
you know. Grady was staring at the outside for like two. He did like oh. five seconds of this. Oh, fuck that. And just <laughs> ran. The, no, I don't want any part of that. I don't know what that is, but I don't approve. So. But he's fine. Uh, he's, if Dan goes outside, they have. This tower usually sits in front of the window that looks out on our back patio, and they just sit like wrapped. Like if he fires up the grill, yeah. if there's like fire, oh my god, we're very excited. So a lot of the time, if he goes outside, if we sit outside, we'll take them out in their little stroller. Well, they're waiting to murder. That your cats that's, are a little. That's fun for about forty-five minutes until they get bored. Your your cats are longing to murder. Is the thing they really are. Could you not have your face in my glass of water, please, <laughs> Daddy? Hey, you want to show them your tag? No, I don't. No. 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 <laughs> little murder beast. There's nothing up here to okay. kill. Let me go. Oh, I'm a strong, independent kitten. Pull me down. No, put me down. All right. They're not going to cooperate. It's on my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to cooperate? You're going to punch me in the face, too? Yeah? Okay. Okay. She is officially done with this shit. Okay. All right. Okay. Dottie really doesn't like being picked up. Well, let's let's get to it because it is that time, and let's do the intro. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs and find all sorts of horrible stuff on the intersets. Bring back here for a little segment we like to call Crazy. "What the Fuck Is Wrong with You," and we're gonna start. Mother of God, it's starting early. The, the debate is barely over. This isn't really a story. This is probably going to be a story next week, but we already have one tweet that's giving us a hint of what's about to happen. Tonight was the presidential debate, Trump and Clinton, and let me... Uh, she pretty much mopped the floor with them, by the way. This, this, this tweet from the Lawrence, Kansas police kind of says a bit of everything. Reminder... We realize politics can make emotions run high, but being mad at a presidential debate is not a reason to call 911. Oh no. So this shit's starting early. What did you say to 911? There's an angry orange man on my TV making me <laughs> stop? I mean, Jesus. Lawrence, Kansas, home of the Winchester brothers. <laughs> What the fuck? All right. Well, let's go far, far away from America to start us off this week. Going to Glasgow. They've been having a bit of weather over there. And hey, we got Vidya. I mean, Ooh. yeah, things got. Have you ever had one of those moments where you walked outside and the day just the, things in the world just gave you a sign that said, nope. Yeah. This, I mean, I work retail, so, yeah. <laughs> this happened in Glasgow. Let's get the video up here. This was their sign of no. Oh, my. You look out the window, it's a bit windy, and then all of a sudden, giant inflatable duck rampaging down the highway. So they're filming the, the next Ghostbusters movie already, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's one of those things. That's just a big old middle finger to Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> they should have made it a big egg, but you know, whatever. Glasgow invaded. Did this happen in Japan once? I don't remember it. Just... I think something like that. Yeah, I remember seeing. Yeah, that. I feel like yeah. a giant rubber ducky yeah, got loose in duck, Japan exactly. at some point. Yeah. Infl a this is an epidemic. They're coming for us. <laughs> a it's large, actually, an alien race. A large inflatable duck has come loose from its bearings near a shopping center in Glasgow. The duck, which had been on display, was sent rolling across a busy road after winds dislodged it. It's believed no one is injured. That's why if you're driving down the highway and suddenly a giant rubber duck comes rolling down the street, that's that's kind of life saying y'all ass should have stayed in bed. You got to be pretty sure that's the end of days. How do you explain that to your boss? That's what I was thinking. How do you call in late with that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> listen, with a picture. <laughs> yeah. 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 
<laughs> yeah, um, I'm Definitely gonna- Definitely take a picture of that shit. I'm gonna be late today <laughs> because a giant inflatable duck tried to kill me. There is a happened a couple weeks ago the giant inflatable moon. Yes. <laughs> yes, it did. Yeah. I, like rolled down a highway. Like maybe <laughs> given that climate change has taken hold and the earth is trying its best to murder us all for what we've done to it, maybe the giant inflatable is not the best idea anymore. <laughs> Robert Ducky, you're the Jesus Christ. Holy shit. Okay, apparently Mike informs me that a giant rubber duck in Hong Kong deflated in the harbor. Uh, this one actually went out for blood, apparently. Yeah. And carnage. Uh, so, let's move on to some more ridiculous... Oh, my God. Okay. So, without invoking build a wall, because I'm pretty sure that's going to get invoked in this one. Um... We do have a problem with drugs coming into the U.S. over the Mexican-U.S. border. And we have cracked down, so the drug uh, smugglers have tried to get more creative in their ways of getting it across the border. They did. We've, covered, we've covered fake Snickers bars. Right. Uh, Drug-filled breast implants. Mm -hmm. um, oh, God. Didn't we? We had, like... Do we have fake, like, meat or something? I don't even remember. Like, we've covered a fake lot. Fake carrots. The fake yeah, meat. fake carrots. This one... Mexican police... Oh, your volume on me is way too high. I can hear me. Yeah, but then I can't hear you. Okay. You need to be using headphones. I have really small ears. They don't stay in. You had a pair. Yeah. See, I can hear me. I mean, hear the echo of myself. Really? I have you pretty low. I can hear me. Because you have a good you mic now. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know where my headphones are at the moment, or I would put them on. Um. Mexican police find van with homemade bazooka for launching drugs into U.S. Wow. Okay. So they just made a t-shirt cannon. <laughs> <laughs> Mexico's National Security Commission announced over the weekend that federal police officers found a panel van kitted out with an air compressor and a metal tube nearly 10 feet long they believe was used as a bazooka to blast packets of narcotics across the border into the United States. This is a flawed system. <laughs> is somebody standing on the other, like a baseball glove? Just <laughs> because. <laughs> what if your aim is off? <laughs> and your guy's over here. <laughs> but a hundred yards this way, where your shit actually lands, is just some fucking rando. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Who thinks it's raining drugs? <laughs> <laughs> That's like you know. Just... Finders keepers, man. That is a really extreme version of the first hit is free. Yes. <laughs> it's like, damn, I knew Amazon was getting aggressive with those drones, but man, yeah. this is ridiculous. Why, yeah, why don't they just have drones? You can buy that shit at Radio Shack. Yeah, and, and it actually can go where you tell it to go. Right, instead of you just having to hope. I, this was one of those guys went, hey, you know, it'd be a great idea. We can't get it. We, we'll just go over the fucking wall, man. We'll just go over the wall. Yeah. We will we'll just go right over that shit. You know, you know, we can do this. We can build it. What we and... need is a drug trebuchet. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is there's one guy down there. Everyone else is going, this is a dumb idea, Dave. No, this is a fucking this is brilliant great idea. This is gold. You're never going to see this coming. You, you always... When that orange motherfucker builds his wall, we're going to be ready. <laughs> I knew it. I fucking knew it. Now, you always shit on my ideas, man, but not this one. This one's good. You got to give me a chance. I know what I'm talking about. Fucking drug bazooka. I mean, that's creative. <laughs> it just, it doesn't seem... <laughs> Accuracy does matter on that one. 
Yeah, like you really got to be sure of your aim and your target. Or you're just legit giving away free drugs. Uh, this next one pissed me. This is going to piss you off. This is going to piss. It should piss everybody off, this next story. You know how we, we've got a lot of, if you see something, say something in America. You know, we're trying to get people to, to if there's something wrong, talk about it. Especially after Flint. With the whole, the water system, and we have the government telling it, no, everything's fine. People are like, no. No, everything's cool. You can totally drink that brown, foamy water. Well, this, and badly enough, this comes from Detroit, which just makes it worse. This is a lesson we're trying to teach kids. You, you should be upstanding citizens and contribute to your community and always do the right thing. Unless you get the fucking school in trouble, in which case you're fucking suspended. Well, I mean, Wells Fargo just fired a bunch of people that wouldn't create fake accounts for people, so... Students suspended after posting picture of discolored water in school bathroom. Ugh. Mm. Hazel Yuko said she was concerned when she saw discolored water coming from a sink in the girls' restroom at school. However, she had no idea she would be suspended because of a picture she took. She snapped the picture of the water and posted it to her social media pages, hoping someone would notice the problem and it would be fixed. Instead of getting help, she was called to the office. Quote, they told me I was being suspended for three days, out of school suspension for taking a picture. It is an inappropriate use of electronics in the restroom. That's what we're going with, huh? Huh. And she also says, quote, everyone in my school, every girl takes like selfies in the bathroom and it makes it their profile picture on Twitter. No one has gotten in trouble. You mother fuckers. Now it does say here the superintendent overturned the suspension. Yeah, but. So the, good the, on you for that superintendent. Yeah. But however, the people, all right, the people she's supposed to trust, the people who tell her, do the right thing, tell the truth, be mm -hmm. upstanding, the people she's supposed to trust, her principals, her teachers, they went, yeah, you got to get the fuck out. Yeah. And they did it with a bullshit charge. Yeah. So I guess they really are kind of teaching her about exactly how the world works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fuck you guys. Fuck, fuck all of, fuck, all of the fuck. This is bullshit. This is complete. What the fuck is the... You, I'm so mad. I could just... It's really upsetting how many people in America, a first world country, don't have potable water. Like, that shouldn't be a thing. It shouldn't. And yet... Here we are. Here we fucking are. I mean, just... <sighs> school suspensions are sometimes a dumb though. When my brother was in high school, he, um, he and his friends made those little, little paper footballs, right? Mm hmm And they decided it would be fun to put an eraser in there that had pins in it, because they were screwing off. The teacher went over to grab it and crunched it and got poked with the pins, and my brother was suspended under the weapons policy for a couple weeks. This, <laughs> I know it's not the same thing. The, but. This is just, you know, we're my sister almost got suspended because she chose to use the one Gaelic curse she knew oh. to tell off the one teacher in our whole school district who'd actually studied Gaelic. Oh, oh. yeah. So half of you are going to tell me no one calls it Gaelic, you call it Irish, dude, whatever. I, whatever. You, you know what I mean. Yeah, and she almost got. She almost got suspended for a week over that, which is a little bit excessive. Yeah. For for saying "kiss my ass" in Irish. But uh. But the, yeah. no, at least at least that that was some malicious intent there. This is a kid who's like my. Yeah. I have to go to this school. I would not like to have whatever fucking toxic shit on my hands. Right. And potentially poison myself. And it's like, no, you made us look bad. Fuck you. We're going to yeah. Trump. Because that's basically what that is. We're going to get you out of here on some trumped up bullshit charge. No, go, go fuck yourself. Oh, OK. Now we just have plain stupidity. So we talked about this in the last uh, tech Q&A. 
the iPhone 7, the headphone jack. Don't believe everything you see on the internet, guys, because some people who were not happy about the fact that their new iPhone 7 doesn't have a headphone jack have saw a video online that told them how to solve it. Oh, no. Oh, yes. It involves the word drill, doesn't it? It does. Public it Drilling a hole in iPhone 7 won't reveal secret headphone jack. No, it will reveal a voided warranty. Do not drill a hole in your iPhone just because the internet told you to. Some dim dimwits actually did, and now their phones are expensive paperweights. Mm -hmm. Apple's newest phone infamously did away with the headphone jack, meaning users had to use an adapter or buy a set of wireless earbuds that cost $150 and aren't even available yet. Critics and customers complain loudly about the drastic change, However, many of the more gullible fell for a fraudulent YouTube video posted by a guy called TechRax, who said all you had to do was drill a hole in your iPhone to create a headphone jack. He demonstrated by putting his iPhone 7 in a vise and drilling a hole in it with a 3.5 millimeter drill bit. Video got 10 million views in a week. Video gave the impression you'd be able to insert your old headphone jack straight into the freshly drilled hole you'd be able to listen to mu music. That's, that's not true. That's that's not how this works. No. That's not how any of the... See, there's more to a headphone jack than just a hole, actually. There's also, like, here's, here's, my, here's my iPhone. Has a headphone jack, but inside that headphone jack, there's little electronic bits <laughs> that meet up with the, the there's there's little electronic vagina <laughs> into which the little electronic head of the penis <laughs> and the little electronic sperms have to connect to the little electronic egg and make a sound baby. <laughs> part. Like, <laughs> that's what they mean. I think we all know that. <laughs> you realize there are children on this stream? There shouldn't be. Go to bed. Where are your parents? This is not for children. If you're a parent watching this with your children, stop that. I I just, I, I just. <laughs> She's not wrong. Oh, I, I, I okay. Look, you can't just drill a hole in something and connect a headphone and it'll work. No, that's not how that works. This, it's not like this. this not, that's not how headphones work. No. no. You can't just go around drilling holes in things. I mean, I just see some jackass trying to drill a hole in his dog. I can listen to my music while I walk him. No. No. I want to make the sound, baby. You gotta have the little electronic egg <laughs> in the little e electronic vagina to fertilize. The sound baby. <laughs> the only way it's gonna work. This, son of a Oh. <coughs> well, okay. Have, all right, let's move on. Oh, it's electronic vagina. Uh, anyway. Have you ever had, have you seen the, the I will pet every dog meme? Yes. Okay. That's cute. But sometimes it doesn't exactly work out real well. Especially when you have a suitcase full of cocaine. Man arrested outside Seahawks game after allegedly asking police about lost briefcase of cocaine. Seattle police arrested a 19-year-old man Sunday after he allegedly asked officers outside the Seahawk game if they found his missing briefcase, which turned out to be full of cocaine. Officer Doug Jorgensen was directing traffic when a man approached him and handed over a briefcase. The man said he'd been out walking his dog when another man stopped to pet it on the street. After petting the dog, the second man walked off, 
leaving his briefcase behind. Jorgensen, hoping to identify the briefcase owner, opened it and discovered four large bags and 27 smaller ones filled with 154 grams of cocaine. Short time later, the 19-year-old... Which he just picked up from his t-shirt <laughs> cannon. <laughs> Short time later, the 19-year-old man turned up and asked police if he found a briefcase. Quote, it contained some really important paperwork and he needed it back. Really important papers. Business papers. <laughs> so what happened was he stopped to pet the doggy. And he for he was so <laughs> enthused to pet the puppy, he forgot his cocaine. <laughs> and he forgot his drugs. <laughs> because puppy. <laughs> and then he went, oh, hello, Mr. Police Officer. I seem to have mispriced my briefcase. It was, it was, it was the dog. He tricked me <laughs> out of my drugs. That was entrapment. I was entrapped <laughs> by a poodle. <laughs> so they don't even need drug sniffing dogs. Yeah. They just need really cute yeah. dogs. <laughs> I just and need, people will drop their drugs to pet they, them. They just need an adorable puppy. And, yeah. and yes. Much oh. less training involved. <laughs> <laughs> just have the dog be really, really cute. Really, Get, really cute. Get one of those little little terriers, little wire hair. Show its little belly. Yeah. Yeah. I love you. Oh well, I'll forget all about these drugs. Hello, dog. <laughs> and I love how you don't when you've lost drugs, don't go to the cop. He's no, not going. To, if they found your drugs. Yeah, or the, just they won't. They won't. Why would they look in my briefcase? Who would do that? Who would do that? <laughs> It's private. <laughs> You're not allowed to search my shit, man. You were an idiot. Related, perhaps get a locked briefcase yeah. to keep your drugs in. Yeah. Our last story this week comes from Canada. And there are stories sometimes that happen that the minute they break, all of Twitter loses their shit and sends it to me. And I mean all of Twitter. I got at least 20 People going, hey, Nash, you seen this shit? <laughs> Just everybody. It to me pretty much any time any hippo in the world <laughs> does anything. Hey, Tara, have you seen this shit? Yeah. Uh, I can't really get mad at that because they mean well. So by the 400th time I've seen the hippo couch, I'm like, thank you for your effort. I've yeah. seen it, but. This one comes to us from Canada. Rectum. Something, something, something. Gold in your ass. Canadian Mint employee accused of smuggling $180,000 of gold in his rectum. Employee at the Royal Canadian Mint allegedly smuggled about $180,000 in gold from the fortress-like facility, possibly evading multiple levels of detection with a time-honored prison trick hiding the precious metal up his bum. Case against uh, Leston Lawrence, 35, concluded in an Ottawa courtroom. Justice Peter Doody... Oh, really? Uh, it's not... It, Peter Doody reserved decision until November 9th on a number of smuggling for cash charges, including theft, laundering the proceeds of a crime, possession of stolen property, and breach of trust. The uck factor aside, the case is also an illuminating look at security measures inside of the Mint, the building on Sussex Drive that pursues hundreds of millions of gold coins annually for Federal Crown Corporation. <clears throat> Indeed, it was not even the Mint that discovered the alleged theft, but an alert bank tell teller. Court was told that on multiple occasions, Lawrence took small uh, circular chunks of gold, a cookie-sized nugget called, quote, a puck, to Ottawa gold buyers in Westgate Shopping Center. Typically, the pucks uh, weighed 270 grams or 7.4 ounces, which he was given checks for in the $6,800 range, depending on the fluctuating gold prices, and then deposited the checks. Okay, so he didn't smuggle it all out at once. No, no. He was constantly putting... Because I was like, I should be in porn. Immediately. That's he, amazing. 
he had been smuggling a whole bunch, a butt, a literal buttload of gold. That is not what we mean by the expression shat a gold brick. <laughs> <laughs> not what it means. <laughs> so he was putting the, he was putting what? What is 7.4 ounces? What, 210 grams? Give me an idea how much that weighs. I mean, eight ounces is a pint. So he was putting a pint of gold. Wait, no, 16 ounces is a pint. Six, so he's putting half a pint of gold in his yeah. ass on a regular basis and smuggling yeah. this to the bank where he was exchanging. And I feel so bad for these bank tellers. Because how the fuck would they know where this gold came right. from? Like, people in retail complain about sweaty boob money. Poof These gold. had to accept ass gold. Ass gold! <laughs> see, I'm gonna remember that next time I have to take sweaty boob money. It'll make me feel better. Ass gold. Half a pound of... People are saying 16 ounces a pound. We're talking half a pound of gold. That's not a small amount of gold. Can you imagine? All right. I mean, it's pretty dense. So it's not like eight ounces of yogurt. <laughs> That's this big. <laughs> you know, like, you got to think of density of molecules here. Like, still. I mean, they call it a puck. I, it's, I doubt it's the size of a hockey puck. But still. <laughs> still too oh, big to be shoving up your ass. Lizzie Borden, talk about dirty money. Hmm. But I have, okay, half a pound of gold, that's heavy. You don't want that up there, because that's, that's, you're, that's a lot of clenching. That's a whole lot of clenching. And what are they shaped like? Oh, that's another yeah. thought. Because that had to go in and come back out. Yeah. You just imagine this guy walking out at the end of the day. Bye, Frank. Bye, Bob. I'm fine. And just, are you okay? No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm real good. You sure? I'm fine. Like, is that really worth the money? Like, I like money. I would like more of it. Am I willing to shove bricks of gold up my ass to get money? I'm not. I gotta be honest, I'm not. Yeah, I mean, he thought it's, I, you know he was thinking this is the perfect crime, they'll never know. Of course they'll fucking know! Because you gotta, you gotta fence that shit. No, yeah. the gold, not the shit. You have to wash the shit off, then fence the gold. You've gotta fence that. And yeah. if you go through regular channels, they're gonna say something. If you keep showing up every few weeks with, here's some gold. Where'd what you get junk of gold? Like, where are you getting this? Well, I'm, I, let's just say I mined it somewhere. It's weird, because it's not an unrefined rock. Oh, look at the time. I'll see you later. Like, it's usually stamped. <laughs> yeah, no, apparently there's a thing they have there that's called a gold scoop that makes a specific shape that they use to set the, the pucks. And that's how they identified it. It was the exact, and no one else uses it but the mint. It was the exact size of that, so. Official government mints tend to have ways of tracking their stuff. It's kind of important. <laughs> it's why you and I can't just print up a bunch of $20 bills. Lady Disquette says, now this guy knows how the gold laying, egg laying goose feels. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, but at least those are egg shaped. Yeah. Not I, puck shaped. I just don't. It's, he, he probably thought he was so smart, too. That's the thing. Yeah. I'm, just, I, I'm so smart. I've got gold in my butt and they'll never know. They'll never know. Now the entire world knows you were putting gold up your butt. Now all those bank tellers know where the... They, everyone at that bank read the story and, and just went... And they you. Oh, they, they are boiling their own hands right now. There is... It's just the entire... Everybody at the bank just like... It's like a record scratch. 
and now on the everybody jukebox. in prison is going to expect you to smuggle their contraband for them. <laughs> you are now the new mule. You're the guy with the rubber ass. <laughs> You're going to mule everything for everybody now. Welcome to your new career. So the first thing we learned this week is your perfect crime is probably not as perfect as you think it is. Especially if it involves shoving things up your ass. <laughs> well, no, no. Perfect crime involves shoving things up your ass. Actually, Tara, a lot of people on the internet internet make a good living that way. All right, fair. <laughs> And I guess this guy made a good loving at it for a while. Yeah. yeah, just not in a legal way. Yeah. We've learned that just because a dog is adorable, priorities. Keep keep priorities. In keep your keep your eye on the ball. <laughs> yeah. Keep your eye on the eight balls. <laughs> Must pet every dog. Well, no, you got to. What's more important, the dog or going to jail? You know, honestly, you put it. Pet dogs in jail. They don't let you pet dogs in jail. No. 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 There's no dogs in jail. They're not allowed. Just because we've learned, just because you drill a hole in something, you can't stick a headphone in it and make it work. No. <clears throat> There's more to it than that. And also, all right. Look, I use all Apple products. This is a known fact. Mm. I will say this into the camera on my iMac, holding my iPhone with like my eye everything. Apple are motherfuckers, okay? They are. They're greedy motherfuckers. Their shit is obsolete a week after it comes out, as soon as the bugs are fixed. Like they're motherfuckers. But they're not the kind of motherfuckers they're gonna sell you a $700 device that's actually a hobby kit. <laughs> <laughs> they're not gonna do that. They're not gonna send you a fuck, they're not Ikea. <laughs> Like, they're motherfuckers, but they're going to sell you a finished product for your way too much money. We've learned that people don't start. It is never too early to distrust authority. Yeah, never, never. We've learned that there are some unique methods of smuggling things across a border, but maybe artillery should not be your go to. That's a, points for creativity, though. <laughs> they, they took, like, the Mythbusters route <laughs> of smuggling drugs. And finally, we learned some days you get out of bed and a giant inflatable duck will try to goddamn murder you. So you better take video of that shit or your boss is going to fire you. Yeah, your boss is definitely not yeah. going to believe you. You, you you can't you can't call in late to work because active duck. No. I mean, apparently you can, but you have to be able to prove it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still stuck on electronic vagina. <laughs> Little electronic vaginas. That's uh, you know, you know, Doctor Teeth and the Electric Mayhem. That's Janice's offshoot band. 